Hey guys, Mick here again for today's workout. Joining me is the lovely Amy. We're really happy to have her with us. That means I don't have to do all the uh, exercises. Uh, so we're gonna have a really fun workout today, a little bit different uh, and a little bit different to the ones you may have done before. We are introducing a piece of equipment and we appreciate not everyone does have access to that at home. So as we go through the workout, I will do my best to give you some, some variations, but it would be really helpful if you've got access to a band similar to the ones that I'm holding right here. Uh, if you do only have access to this one, you should be right for most of our movements. However, there, there might be some where this is a little bit short, so I'll do my best to give you some alternatives. If you do have the longer version, uh, so something similar to this, the way we can make this shorter for some of our movements is to simply double it up, and then it becomes very similar to the one we've got here. So we're gonna use this, this strap for, uh, for most of our exercises. Um, really important to get warmed up for our, our workout as, as we always do, of course. So Amy's just gonna to start to open up the upper body. Uh, we may have been stuck in seated positions or in front of the computer, potentially at home in some awkward positions, so we appreciate that. It's a really good opportunity just to open up the upper body. If you don't have the strap or anything like that, feel free just to open up naturally without the band, open up through the chest and the torso. Really nice one you can do with the band, called a band pull apart. Some of you may have heard it referred to it as that. Palms are up in this one, thumbs are facing back, and we're pulling back, opening up through the, the chest, squeezing the upper back together. Uh, again, you can do this without, uh, without the resistance band. Not quite as effective, but a nice way to open up the chest uh, regardless. Let's take that back overhead, Amy, and just really open up through those arms. Feel free to go in different positions, different movements, whatever feels nice. You might want to tuck your hips in just a little bit so you're not excessively arching in your spine as well. That should feel really good. That should feel really good. And our last one here, we will go into that, that pull apart pattern as well and just really open up the chest and squeeze the upper back together. So we've got a series of three movements we're going to work through today. Uh, the first one is a single leg deadlift and we're going to use the band as some resistance. So we'll see how we go with that. You might have noticed Amy just looped that band together so now it's a little bit shorter. And she's going to go into a hinge pattern. So she's loading up through the left leg, right leg is coming back and she's hinging forward. Whoop. <laughs> And she's trying to keep, she's doing her best to stay stable. And then she's hinging forward at the hip. So it's a difficult movement, guys. We've got a, the band for just that little bit of resistance, particularly at the top of the movement. And we're going to work through six reps here. And then we're going to go straight into our next, next exercise. We don't have to move. We're ready to go for our next pattern. It's a really tricky exercise, this one. She's done a great job there. So our next movement is a bent over row pattern, again, using that band for resistance. So we've been struggling to find ways, how do, we, how do we work these pulling muscles? As soon as we introduce resistance bands, we've got an opportunity to really, to really work the upper back and work those row patterns. So it's a great exercise that uh, we can get into today. Again, just the six reps, then we're gonna change sides. Um, I did mention we've got a, a, a series of three exercises. So our first one is our hinge, which you've seen and Amy's doing right now. Second one is that row pattern. Uh, and then the third one we'll get to in a moment as well. So it's hinge, row, and then another extension movement, which we'll come to in a second. Once again, it's a really difficult exercise, this single leg pattern. Uh, if you want to make it just that little bit easier, maybe there's a wall nearby or a fence or something nearby you can just use to help support. Outstanding. So then we set, set up into our row pattern. So you see Amy's leaning forward there, got a really nice position in the, in the back, just keeping nice and straight through her spine. It's just keeping that elbow drawn in, drawn in uh, and pulling back nice and strong, getting a good contraction in the the upper back and the elbows, uh, sorry, and the biceps as well. So this next movement is a, a variation of an exercise you've most likely done. Uh, it's a back extension variation, but we're using the band as a little bit of resistance on the glutes for this movement. So you'll see Amy's gonna create a little bit of tension by pushing out against the band and then extending into that pattern. Beautiful, we're gonna get her to put a little bit more tension onto that band, yeah, that's really nice. Again, just six reps here, um, but a really nice position, once again, to counteract uh, the fact that a lot of us are in, are in hunched over positions in, in these potentially weird work environments at home. 
Uh, Amy's doing a great job here. And this is the third exercise in this pattern. So we're going to go back to the first one. So there's a pretty, pretty meaty, meaty group of exercises here uh, and are very heavily focused on the back part of the body, which can be difficult to train without any equipment. So we are back into that, that bent over, sorry, that single leg deadlift movement before we move into the bent over row. <clears throat> so Amy's stabilizing left hand on hip, which is an option that everyone can take. As I said, if you've got something nearby that might work, um, even a piece of furniture, that can also help stabilize in this pattern. It's, it's trickier than it looks. Beautiful. We've got our six reps here, and then I think you all know where we're going now. So we're finding our bent over position, maintaining a nice neutral position in the spine, keeping the elbow tucked in pretty close to the body, and we're pulling that band back. Just be careful, guys. Different. Um, band colors or thickness represent different tension in that band. Um, so this one we've got here for Amy is probably right on the money in terms of the, the tension it provides. So you may have to tweak some of these movements. So what does that mean? If I'm doing that bent over pattern and the resistance on the tubing is a little bit too intense, I might need to lean down a little bit further just to shorten that range of motion. Just something to keep in mind. So we're into our second set here. Um, single leg RDL or Romanian deadlift as it's popularly known. And then we're gonna roll right into our bent over row once we finish this pattern as well. Beautiful, a again, a really nice way to train that pulling or rowing motion. And Amy's doing a, a great job here. And this is the second of our three exercises in this group. And remember what that third one is, it's that extension pattern where we're just putting a little bit of resistance uh, into the lower body, into the glutes, and we're just pushing out against that band just a little bit as we go into that extension pattern. Yeah, and Amy's doing a really good job here. Excellent. So again, just to keep it simple, we've got six reps of all these exercises as well. Um, just so you know as you're leading into your next round how many sets you've got to work through. Really nice. She's making this one look way easier than it is. This is a really difficult exercise. So we've got one more set here, guys. Uh, Amy was probably hoping that was our last one, as I'm sure some of you are. Uh, but this is our last set. So again, our three series of exercises, uh, single leg Romanian deadlift into our row and then into that really nice extension pattern. And again, if you need to play around with your, the resistance on your tube, maybe you've got to do a third loop perhaps, uh, or maybe you do only need one because you've got something similar to, to this shorter one here. So just play around with the, the feel of that intensity or that tension on the, um, on the strap. Good. And you can see, if you can see you know, even on uh, Amy's foot, the work her foot is doing to balance and to grip the floor, it's, it's doing a lot of work, which is one of the really nice benefits of of single leg work as well, that foot and the ankle really fighting against the, the instability that you've got just on the one leg. And that is a really easy way to increase the difficulty of some of the exercises you might be familiar with, is just decrease the base of support. Uh, so as soon as we go from two to one legs, that exercise becomes that little bit more challenging. That'd be great to obviously give Amy some feedback, but mindful of, of the social distancing requirements we've, we've got in at the moment. Yep. <laughs> so um, I think she's doing a really good job though, and you guys can probably see that as well. So this is our last series, uh, our last uh, set in this series of three, uh, and we're almost ready to go into the, the, bent, over, the bent over row position. Really nice. And our last extension pattern here. Um, and then we, we'll mix it up a little bit. We've got three new exercises we're gonna go into in a second. Uh, but just to finish off this round, six extension patterns, little bit of resistance on the tube, just pushing the legs out a little bit, getting a bit of a contraction on the glutes as well. Yeah, really nice. Beautiful. This is our last one here. Excellent. 
Hey guys, uh, this is part two of the workout. We, we did have a little bit of a technical glitch, you could say. Um, others would say that Amy just used the F word, uh, which is actually what happened. So feel free at home if you're pushing through some of these movements and you feel like the odd uh, bomb here and there, by all means, because Amy just decided to drop one. So we've had to reshoot clearly. Um, but we're going to get back into the workout, guys, for the second group of three movements. So the first one is going to be our reverse lunge, but we are taking it a little bit. We're, we're mixing it up a little bit. You will need some form of an upright uh, a fence or a, a railing outside or something around the home that you can just, just attach and loop your band through. And then Amy's going to loop that around the thigh of her right leg. Clearly, the more she moves away from that upright, the, the level of intensity increases as that band tries to push her or pull her away, sorry. Now that she's set up, she's gonna go into a reverse lunge, uh, but that band is trying to pull her across. Uh, this is introducing um, some, some level of intensity in what's called the frontal plane. So again, pushing, pulling her across her body uh, and loading in that movement while she's working through the, the reverse lunge pattern. Now, unfortunately, we have to change sides, of course, to balance everything. Uh, so you will see the, the back of Amy uh, as she performs the, the other leg. Same sort of thing here, though, guys. Uh, and try to plant your foot in roughly the same position. That way, you're getting the same level of intensity on both legs. Uh, so it's a banded reverse lunge, really nice movement and a nice way to just vary this pattern a little bit. Once we've done six reps on each side, we're going to set up for a banded press. Uh, you're going to find, you're going to get very sick of doing push-ups because they're an easy one to go towards when you're using body weight. As soon as we've got the band available to us, uh, we can vary that a little bit. Now guys, just be mindful, depending on the intensity or the level of tension in that band, uh, you might need to get closer or further away from where you're anchoring it to. This one's a little bit, uh, it's got a bit of tension on it, so Amy's got qu quite close to the upright, um, but you can see she's working really hard to press out from that position. Again, just a nice way to, a way to introduce a, a pressing movement that doesn't involve a, a push-up. Not that we don't love push-ups, it's one of our favorite, uh, but just to provide a bit of variety here. And our next exercise is a bit of a crowd favorite um, in the sports performance world and in, in building some strength in the, the core, the midsection. Uh, some of you will be familiar with this. It's called the Paloff Press. Now to start this, the first set we're gonna do is simply stay static. Uh, so it does look a little bit boring and nothing very interesting going on. However, Amy's working really hard in her midsection to create stability in this movement. That band is clearly trying to pull her to the side, um, but she's, she's working really hard just to stay upright and create some tension there. We're gonna hold that for about 20 to 30 seconds. Um, and we will provide some variety this, with this movement in the subsequent sets. But to start with, just pressing the hands out, creating tension through the torso, and just staying strong and firm in that position. Really nice position for Amy's head there as well. So not traveling forward or tilting or anything. She's in that nice upright position and a good posture with her, with her torso there. So that's about 20 seconds. And we're gonna go back to the first movement in this series of three. That reverse lunge pattern. Band can stay exactly where it is. And if we do need to adjust the intensity, we can do that by how close or how far away we get from that upright. You can use anything, guys. Uh, as I mentioned, a fence, um, a balcony with a, anything that's got an upright, uh, even like a heavy piece of furniture perhaps in the home. Um, just be careful depending on how much intensity you put on that, that strap. Um, and also the kind of strap you use will play a part in how close or how far away you get. Um, some of you may have a similar strap that's really thin. That one you might need to move a little bit further away. If yours is a little bit thicker, you might need to stay a little bit closer to the, the upright. Uh, we looked at the start of the video on the different kinds of straps. The shorter strap is a little bit difficult on a movement like this. So you may need to use the um, do, complete the movement without the strap, and that's fine. Once again, we're back into our pressing pattern. Um, Again, if you've got the, the shorter strap, a little bit difficult to do or complete this movement. But of course, we do have that, that favorite movement that, uh, that we've spoken about a little bit. Uh, variations of the, the push-up are always a nice movement. But we thought we'd mix it up for today's session. Once again, 
really nice strong position there. Amy's remaining tight and taut through the torso um, and completing that movement really well. Now the pal-off press, one of those you know, all-time favorite type of movements, just to create a little bit of a different, a different feel on this movement now, we're gonna get Amy to, to start to move the torso, or the upper body. So she's bringing that into her chest, bringing that strap in and then driving it back out. And again, remaining, remaining tight uh, through her entire torso there. You'll even get a little bit of a contraction through the glutes, which is fine. Uh, a little bit of tension in the lower body as well, which is no dramas at all. And we tend to work on this one uh, for time under tension as opposed to sets and reps. Uh, so again, we'll complete this for about 30 seconds or so now that we're, we're amping the intensity up a little bit before we do change sides. So we want to balance the body out, of course. There is more we can do with this pattern. So right now we're just introducing the upper body into this movement. In our last set, we will introduce the lower body as well, just to create a different feeling again. We know it can get a little bit difficult to be creative at home with your workouts, but we're trying to find some variations of some of these popular movements uh, just to keep you engaged with your workouts. Hey guys, this is our third set of this workout, so we're almost at the end. So Amy's just gonna place that, that resistance band just over the right thigh, and she's gonna start working into her reverse lunge. Um, guys, and just as we mentioned a bit earlier, we can increase the intensity of this movement by our body position relative to where that strap is attached to. So if we want to make that harder, uh, we can just by simply moving away from it. But um, we feel like uh, Amy's done a few workouts today, as you could imagine. Uh, and she's pretty content where she is. So she's done, been doing a great job for us. Uh, and our last set here, so six reps each leg uh, before we do move into that second movement of this set. Excellent. Second movement here is that press pattern uh, that we've tried to integrate into this movement or into this workout just to, to get over the monotony of doing all the push-ups. But if you don't have the, the strap, then of course the push-ups are, are a good option for you. Nice strong position there that Amy's got. Pressing out. Awesome. And again, the volume of the workout can be increased simply by adding sets. So if the workouts as they are aren't quite challenging enough, feel free to put, put the uh, player on pause and just add an extra set to your workout. And our last movement here is that variation of the pal-off press. So this is a new one. We haven't seen this one in this workout yet, uh, but we're combining upper body and lower body in this movement. So we're starting strap into chest, press away, back in, little half squat, up we come, away, in, half squat. So this one, as we mentioned earlier, we're focusing a little bit more on time under tension as opposed to sets or reps. Um, so we're looking for about 30 seconds of work here. Uh, and there's, there's more variations we can add here. Instead of a squatting, you can go into lunge patterns, but for today, we're just sticking to our squat. Balance the body, of course, other side. It's hard for you to see here, guys, but we press away into the chest and we work into our, our half pattern there. So we had tried to mix the, the workouts up a little bit by using the straps. We appreciate that not everyone has access to that. So some of these exercises are fine to be done without the straps if you don't have, have them available to you. Um, uh, the majority of those movements are fine. The press is obviously a little bit harder without the strap, so we may need to go into that push-up position. But we are going to use it for our, our cool-down movement as well. And some of you will be familiar with this exercise. It's a good morning. You actually can do this without any load. Um, a lot of people are familiar with them with barbells and, and other, other pieces of equipment. We're using the strap just to provide a little, bit a little bit of tension, particularly at the top of the movement. So that nice pull through the hamstrings and then as Amy gets to the top of the movement and fully extends, she gets a nice stretch through those, those hamstrings. So Amy's just gonna complete about 10 to 12 reps of this one um, to finish today's workout off. So we hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, please be mindful of your swear words as you do complete this workout. Uh, we did edit Amy's little F-bomb out of there, but um, feel free to drop those in if you need and also drop them into the comments. Maybe not the full word, but um, feel free to drop the old F-bomb as needed. And we look forward to seeing you on our, on our next workouts.